Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today we have something very special. This is the Windows 8 Developer Preview. I'm not a developer, but you or I or anyone else can download it, load it on whatever machine you want, and try it out for free. So cool, right? So today we're going to be using the ASUS ET2410. This is an all-in-one display slash PC unit. So this is an Intel Core i5 quad core. It's also got a 1080p screen with a beautiful bla blast glass multi-touch display. It has a look and feel that's more like what you would expect from a Mac in terms of the solidity, in terms of the beautiful aluminum base. So this is solid aluminum on the base. And, but that is without compromising what you expect from a PC. So it's got all the IO options that you require, such as USB 3, even eSATA, which is great because that's what we're using to boot to our external drive to boot up into Windows 8. And it also has your full complement on the back of HDMI, USB 2. This is cool. It's not only got HDMI out, but also HDMI in, meaning you can use it as a monitor if you have it in a conference room. You can run off this one itself, or you can even run off of a laptop sitting next to it if someone wants to come in and do their own presentation. Neat, right? Okay, and then over on the other side, you got your power, your Kensington, and finally a DVD drive. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys the Windows 8 preview using this exquisite piece of machinery from ASUS. So one of the biggest innovations with Windows 8 that is going to make it compatible with such a wide variety of devices, remember I did say desktops, notebooks, and even tablet computers, is the Metro interface. So yes, that's what it's going to be called. Metro, it basically refers to this more tiled, swipey, scrolly, touch interface way of interacting with your PC. So you're going to notice that some pretty similar in some ways to a tablet. Well, they pretty much had to do that because unless you integrate a more desktop or multiple desktop type of big button interface, you're not gonna be able to use it on a small device like this. The reality of it is, on a smaller screen, you're not able to list a bunch of little line items with little tiny icons and expect people to click on them with a mouse. We need touch-friendly buttons. So you can see all of the buttons in the Metro interface are quite large, allowing you to click them with your fingers very, very easily and very accurately without any difficulty. Now, another thing that they've added with the Metro interface is a store. So you guys are probably familiar at this point already with the Android market. So you just click on the apps at the top and then you click the shop icon so you can uh, you know browse through all of your favorite apps whatever the case may be. Well Windows hasn't really had an answer to that and hasn't really needed it. I mean Windows supports apps. App is just short for application, but they haven't had an online store to deliver them in the past. Well, Windows 8 changes all that. You can see right here, if we click on the store, Windows is going to be adding a store that will allow you to purchase or, I mean, presumably there would be also free apps that you can use through there. Now, unlike Apple, we're not going to see draconian regulation of the types of apps and that are available in the store, but we should expect to see some level of validation from Microsoft's level to ensure that the Windows 8 experience is a positive one. Now this is all fine and good for tablet, but what if you do like the traditional desktop user interface? I've shown it a couple times, but I'm just going to show it to you guys once more. Yes, the desktop interface is here and you can use it in much the same way that you're accustomed to. This looks an awful lot like Windows 7 right about now. So we've got our recycle bin, we've got what looks like a start menu, but that's going to be a little bit different. That's now the metro button is what I'm going to call it. We've also got our taskbar where we can pin apps or manage things with a mouse and keyboard. I mean, look at these tiny little buttons for the action center as well as for uh, managing your wireless. Clearly, you're going to need to use a mouse for these. So yes, it is still optimized for the mouse keyboard experience, but check this out. When I click the wireless, look at this. This could be used with a mouse or with a finger with much, much more ease than you see in Windows 7, the previous generation flagship from Microsoft. So let's do some more little, actually, you know what? Sorry, I'm going to get ahead of where we, how we did this last time. So I want to show this little swipe on the other side here as well. So this is going to aid everyone, not just the tablet users, but we've got search, share, start, devices, and settings. This can all be accessed by just 
Swiping out from the right hand edge. Search is critical because like I mentioned before, the UI has to be so different. You don't have the advantage of long lists of files. You're going to have to search for things much differently. So here you can search whether it's for your apps, for your settings, or for your files. It doesn't really matter. You can tell it what you want to search for. Now swiping from the other side, this is an awful lot like Windows Tab. Oh, hold on like the Windows tab functionality that we had in Windows Vista, where you would press Windows tab and it would, it would shuffle like a deck of cards between the apps that you have open. Well, this is going to switch between any of the apps that you currently have open, but it works a little bit differently this time. So I'm gonna open up a couple things. I'm gonna open up Paint Play, and then I'm gonna switch out of it. I'm gonna go back to the Metro interface. I'm gonna open up an Internet Explorer window, and I'm gonna open up one more thing just for the sake of uh, demonstrating the feature fully. I'm gonna open up this aircraft app. So, Windows 8 does not close things when you tuck them away like that. I'm going to go ahead and open up the Task Manager. Here you go. And I'm just gonna show you, check this out. So the apps that are not currently focused, and this is gonna help it manage resources in a big way, are labeled as suspended. So that's going to reduce the amount of resources that they're consuming when it's hiding it away, much like the way you would see on a tablet or a smartphone interface. Very cool, right? We also have a much upgraded performance monitor, including disk access, wireless, CPU, and memory, all on one easy to manage screen. Very, very cool. App history, startup, users, details, and services are all within the upgraded Windows Task Manager. That one was long overdue, and I'm very, very happy to see it. So here I'm just going to show you guys what it's like to switch between the different things we have open. So there's my airplane, there's my desktop, there's my airplane again, there's my, what is this guy? Oh, this is Internet Explorer, and then there's my desktop, airplane, and paint. So you just go swipe, swipe, swipe and you'll be able to cycle through all of the different things that you have open. Now, on a, on a desktop that is designed entirely for Windows 8, we're probably gonna see flush mounted bezels, so it's a little bit easier to swipe off the side. Here I have to be pretty careful about where I put my fingers, but I'm expecting those to be available in, on mass when Windows 8 actually launches. So thank you for checking out our Windows 8 preview and a big thanks to ASUS for providing us with an ET2410 desktop which allowed us to really showcase the features of Windows 7 in a way that a non-touchscreen computer does not allow.